We observe stars. We know what goes on in their center. They explode, laying bare their contents. And what we have discovered is that the elements of the periodic table, that which we are made of, derive from the actions of stars that have manufactured the elements, exploded, scattered their enriched guts across the galaxy, contaminating gas clouds that then form a next generation of stars populated by planets and possibly life. And so when you look at the ingredients of the universe, the number one ingredient is hydrogen. Next is helium, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. Those are the top ingredients in the universe. And you say, well, okay, that's kind of cool. Well, and you look at Earth, because we like thinking of ourselves as special. Well, what are we made of? Number one in the human body is hydrogen. Matches the universe. Number two is oxygen. Matches the universe. Number three, carbon. Matches the universe. Number four, nitrogen. Matches the universe. We learned in the last 50 years that, of course, not only do we exist in this universe, it is the universe itself that exists within us. Because when you look up at the night sky, it's no longer we're here and that's there. It's that we are part of that. Now, are we alone in the universe? We're made of the most common ingredients there are. And our chemistry is based on carbon. Carbon is the most chemically active ingredient in the entire periodic table. If you were to find a chemistry on which to base something really complex called life, you would base it on carbon. Carbon is like the fourth most abundant ingredient in the universe. No, man. You can make more molecules out of carbon than you can all other kinds of molecules combined. If we ask ourselves, are we alone in the universe, it would be inexcusably egocentric to suggest that we are alone in the cosmos. The chemistry is too rich to declare that. The universe, too vast. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand in all the beaches of the world. There are more stars in the universe than all the sounds and words ever uttered by all humans who have ever lived. To say we're alone in the universe. No, we haven't found life outside of Earth yet. We're looking. Haven't looked very far yet. But we're looking. And how about life on Earth? How is it hard to form? Just because we don't know how to do it in the lab doesn't mean nature had problems. So it may be, given that information, that given the right ingredients, which are everywhere, life may be inevitable an inevitable consequence of complex chemistry. If you look at our closest genetic relative to human beings, it would be the chimpanzee. We share like 98 plus percent identical DNA. The most brilliant chimp there ever was maybe can do a little bit of sign language. Well, our toddlers can do that. Toddlers. Everything that we are that distinguishes us from chimps emerges from that 1% difference in DNA. The Hubble telescope, these grand, that's in that 1%. Maybe everything that we are that is not the chimp is not as smart compared to the chimp as we tell ourselves it is. Maybe the difference between constructing and launching a Hubble telescope and a chimp combining two finger motions as sign language, maybe that difference is not all that great. Just the same way we label our books optical illusions. We tell ourselves it's a lot. Maybe it's almost nothing. How would we decide that? Imagine another life form that's 1% different from us in the direction that we are different from the chimp. Think about that. We got 1% difference and we're building the Hubble telescope. Go, one, go another 1%. Who, what are we to they? We would be drooling, blithering idiots in their presence. That's what we would be. Think about how smart they would be. Quantum mechanics would be intuitive to their toddlers. 
whole symphonies would be written by their children and like I said, just put up on the refrigerator door the way our pasta collages are on our refrigerator doors. We don't have conversations with any other species on Earth with whom we have DNA in common. To believe that some intelligent other species is going to be interested in us, enough to have a conversation? So I lay awake at nights wondering whether we as a species are simply too stupid to figure out the universe that we're investigating. And maybe we need some other species 1% smarter than we are, for which strength theory would be intuitive, for which all the greatest mysteries of the universe, from dark matter, dark energy, the origins of life, and all the frontiers of our thoughts would be something that they would just self-intuit. I'm jealous of that possibility, because I want to be around for those discoveries.